Hi, my name is Don Scantz and I'm a technology analyst at Semiconductor Insights. Welcome to another episode of Teardown TV. Today I'm joined by my good friend from Tech Online, Alan Yogasingham. Alan? Alan! Right here, Don. Hey, Alan, thanks for dropping by. Hey, no problem. Sorry for being late. That's fine. Uh, you don't look so good, Alan. What's going on? Well, um, I've been uh, pretty busy the last few days, uh, but uh, it, I'm done. I'm done. I'm good. Oh, yeah? What you been up to? Check it out. Hey, what's that? <sighs> that is the original iPhone from the U.S. With all this here, about 4,000 lines of code, about $300,000, give or take, $299,000 worth of parts and labor, and about six solid days of work, I finally got the U.S. iPhone to work in Canada. To what? It's the U.S. iPhone. I've got it working in Canada, so everybody in Canada can make phone calls now. Um, have you watched the news at all lately, Alan? No, I've been uh, busy with this thing. Uh, can I just have a word with you for a second here? Yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, the iPhone got launched by Rogers. What got launched Canada. today? Uh, iPhone. So, uh, this is... Whole world, rest of the world. So this whole thing I made here is kind of useless. Yeah. So I'm not going to be here. Not really necessary. Uh, okay, Alan. Well, you may have overheard uh, me mention to Alan that today, in fact, the uh, second generation iPhone with 3G network compatibility launched for the rest of the world outside the U.S., including for us here in Canada. So today, that's what our episode of Teardown TV will be about, where we take apart the first iPhone to hit stores in Canada. Yeah, I, I just checked the, the news. You're right. So, since we've got this new iPhone 3G and my life's work is useless. Uh, why don't we throw it over to Sam and, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just a little. Why don't we throw it over to Sam and uh, have him do a teardown? It's okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Sam. Here we see that the iPhone again features a 2.0 megapixel camera located on the back of the phone. Let's mention some of the new features of the 3G iPhone. The 3G feature of this new phone calls for faster web browsing, or speed surf as Apple calls it, with faster downloading of emails and data over 3G wireless networks. There's also now built-in GPS, for guys like me who get lost going down the street to get the morning paper. The big feature that warranted most of the hype behind this launch is the iPhone developer program. Apple is now offering to programmers resources real-world testing on the phone and distribution through their new app store to get software into consumers' hands as quickly as possible. The iPhone still features most of the capabilities of today's iPod by still playing music and showing video. Now with the new 3G version, streaming video or downloading video will be much quicker over this wireless network compared to the previous GSM version. Here we see Sam taking apart the iPhone 3G. After he was finished, Sam mentioned that this new iPhone was easier to take apart compared to the previous version. First, we see Sam remove the primary PCB from the iPhone 3G, featuring all the main components. A quick scan of the board reveals some new ICs that were not found on the original iPhone, but we'll get into those details later. Now would be a good time to remind people that Sam is professional, and when taking things apart, one must always be careful. A good example of what could go wrong is here when we see Sam removing the battery and... <laughs> Just kidding, folks. But that's why they put warnings on the battery. Thanks very much for that teardown, Sam. Don, on first glance, did you notice any differences between the new iPhone and the old iPhone? Well, I didn't get a really good look at it before you guys hacked it apart, but I did hear from some of the fan sites that the case design is a little bit different. We have a plastic back and things like that. Um, the thing that I noticed after Sam started taking things apart was that the uh, board sy system level board design has now got all the chips on a single PCB substrate, um, and the previous phone had it in two pieces. So right, which is what you're holding there. Yeah, yeah. what's left of the uh, first generation iPhone? Yeah, we did a number on that one. <laughs> um, Sam did mention that uh, a few of the components were a little bit easier to remove, which might bode well for people looking to replace things like uh, batteries. Oh, there was a bit of an oops with the battery, maybe, and the uh, screen does come apart supposedly a little bit easier, but uh, I don't think Apple designed that in specifically for the teardown guys. No. And back to the board itself, we saw some new ICs, which is come to be expected because we're dealing with a new wireless standard. Why don't we go now to the board itself and take a look at some of the ICs that are on there. 
The first Apple branded part we'll take a look at is this one labeled with K4X1G163PC-DGC3. Before we even decap this device, the part numbering betrayed the Apple marking, as it was easy to tell that this was a Samsung device. What was surprised us, though, was that this multi-chip device contained a similar Samsung processor to the previous generation iPhone, this one labeled with the die marking S5L8900B02, the only difference being in the previous model it was B01. Next, let's look at the IC labeled with 337S3394 and no manufacturing markings at all. In another movie speculated before the launch, this is the digital baseband processor provided by Infineon. However, what makes this interesting to us is that it's almost a multi-stack die. One thing we were able to identify was the PMB8877 as the edge processor. However, the other die was somewhat complicating to us. Here's what we speculated. Some of you might remember that in September of 2007, Apple signed a seven-year deal with InterDigital over patents that dealt with how the iPhone technology would go onto wireless networks. The deal encompassed previous edge technology 